Hi everyone, welcome back to the penultimate episode of our Fallout playthrough. We are working our way towards the Brotherhood to ask for some support invading the military base, but just starting off by showing a couple of the random encounters that we found. Have not yet found the alien blaster, unfortunately, but we have found this massive footprint here. Uh, we did search around, no other tracks in the area, but interesting, no idea what that actually might be. And we also find this guy who is a traveller and sings songs. So as we just go through the dialogue here, what's his story? Wonders from place to place, making a living with music, bit of tinkering work. What kind of music do you sing? Old folk songs, some Celtic music. And if we ask the guy, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this, if we ask the guy about this particular song, he knows it, he sings it. And that does actually, allegedly, give us a one boost to our charisma and as we make our way from the singing guy head over to the brotherhood entrance and get ready to go inside and speak with the brotherhood to gain their support And here we are on the first floor of the Brotherhood base. A couple of things that we need to do before we go off and speak to Maxon. We're just nipping back into this training room here to speak to Talus, the knight that told us somebody was missing earlier on. You may remember from one of the earlier episodes, we rescued a member of the Brotherhood, Brother Jonathan. And Talus here offers us a reward, but actually looking through it, there's nothing here really that we need or want. We've already got the power armor. Laser pistol, no point when we've already got the plasma rifle and rocket launcher, be no good to us, no explosive skills, no big weapon skills, so we just leave it for the time being. Quick conversation with Michael, the quartermaster, actually nothing that we can do with him. He won't sell us anything, he won't give us anything, so time just to leave. And off we go, start getting ready to head over to the next lift, next elevator and make our way over to speak to Maxon. Slowly does it, as always, with this game. Straight to the fourth level. Nothing else on the other two levels that we need. And we can see, just in the top corner of the screen here, guy in the purple robes, is the Elder, and the General, and this is Maxon. Hello again, Initiate. Uh, things going well? What do you got? Finally. Well, this will get the elders off their butts. We'll fortify the fortress and surprise those damn mutants. So, uh, what is your alternative? Mm, not a bad plan. Tell you what, let me go try and beat it into the elders. No guarantees, but I'll try. So there we go, Maxon agrees with the plan. Maxon, a name that you'll be familiar with, anyone who's played Fallout 4. Obviously a family that runs all the way through the Fallout series. But we need to head over to the conference room, first off and speak with the other elders and see if we can gain their support as we go and see if they will help take out the military base so in we go trying to figure out which one actually will speak to us and we start to run through the information that we've gathered and what we've learned about the military installation being used by mutants, heavily guarded, patrolled regularly. What do the mutants look like? Again, learning some of the information that we've gained from the holodisks and the other information about the mutants. We share that information about the autopsy from Vri and the threat that the mutants might pose. 
gathering an army, heavily armed army. They're not just going to parade around. And they may well come and march on the Brotherhood as it's the only real opposition to their army. Preemptive strike. Let's gather a small team, three paladins. And we head over with the three paladins to the base itself. And here we are, arriving at the base with the three paladins alongside us. Two with miniguns, one with rocket launchers, full power armour, got some serious firepower. I stick with the plasma rifle, do like this gun, gotta say. And we start combat, taking out the first guard, literally melting him away into nothing there. And here we go, taking out the people guard in the front. This guy's ripped to shreds by a minigun. And it's now time to search through the super mutants, not just for loot, but we're trying to find one with a radio. It wasn't that guy. Doesn't look like it's this guy here, but we'll take some of his ammo and his stim packs. Turns out it was this guy. <laughs> It is this guy, so we go pick up the radio. After a quick refill of ammo. And we can then actually use this radio to trick the super mutants in the base to thin the numbers out, tell them that we're under attack by a group of humans and send them to the wrong coordinates. We actually get 1500 XP for that, which is unbelievable. Quite a lot of XP, just for fooling people. So we can now ditch that radio, don't need it. But what we do need is the code to actually get us through the main door here. So we head over to the last super mutant that's on the ground. Take this holodisc here. He also had a radio as it happens. And if we read this holodisc here, we find there's a cord on there that will get us straight into the front door here. We use it, we unlock the door, and in we go. And we're immediately greeted by a group of super mutants and ditched by the other Brotherhood members. So it's just us and Dogmeat in here now. And we are at close quarters combat. This guy tanks a headshot with the plasma rifle. And I'm getting nervous. This guy's got a rocket launcher. Luckily, he can't shoot at all. And it just flies straight past us. Dogmeat jumps in. Time to take out this guy with any luck here, without hitting dog meat. He's melted. And now dog meat's trying to take out the guy with the rocket launcher. And he shoots dog meat with the rocket, which is really scary, but somehow blows himself up. <laughs> I don't even know how he's managed that. But it looks like dog meat survives to live another day. And we melt this guy. We can come out of combat state now and we've just leveled up so time to pick our next perk you can pick a perk every three levels so the action boy perk does look pretty good to be fair just have a quick flick through see if there's anything else here nothing too much that seems like useful mysterious stranger always a good one but we go with the action boy that gives us an additional action point which is useful because on certain guns now particularly this uh, plasma rifle here we should be able to fire that 
twice per turn. Use a Stimpak and Dogmeat there, make sure he's up at full health. And then this is where things start getting a little bit fidgety to get through these gates here, these force fields. We have to use our skill each time on the green ones to deactivate the force field temporarily. Now the red ones you can just run through, but the green ones you can't for some reason. You have to physically use the repair skill through the skill dex button and then kind of highlight the force field and use it to temporarily shut it down. See if I can shoot this guy, tried a number of times, won't let me use the science skill on this computer here. Not much information, only the apparently the recreational games folder. But then this guy does see us with his rocket launcher, shoots, blows us both away, and I make a terrible, terrible mistake here, missing him, which leads to Dogmeat running in, smashing at the force field, and he is unfortunately, tragically killed. I miss my second shot, tears in my eyes still, obviously. Can't shoot straight, don't know what I'm doing. Take another hit with the rocket launcher. Sent to the deck again. In for the torso this time, a little bit easier, surely. Hit him. Go for the second shot, if I can. Already out of action points. Blown away again with the rocket launcher. I'll go the safe shot with the torso. Melt him. But we have lost the goodest of boys, dog meat. And there we go, running through the red barriers. And it is now time to start a hate-filled rampage through this bunker. <laughs> trying to take out every super mutant that we see as revenge for dog meat. One falls. Another. And we just clear this room out. One by one, melting them all into nothing. And that is just a room filled with piles of goo that were once super mutants. Checking each of them for loot. They've all got mini guns or guns that aren't quite as good as what we have already. Take the guns and bullets there. I don't really think we need it to be honest, but we've read up anyway. Head back over to the elevator to go down to the second level and here's another red force field for us to just run through we take a few hit points as we go between roughly between about three and ten each time and we've got a massive room of super mutants there so let's take out the smaller room first off again using the skill to deactivate the force field Where the game kind of really slows down a little bit when you're doing things like that each and every time. But it's a product of its time, of course. 97. And yet again, time to take out every super mutant in sight. A couple more were melted and turned into goo. We even take out the robo brains now. Hitting the CPU. And this one. Straight shot to the CPU, and that is him gone as well. And now it's time to clear out this next room. Must be getting off for a dozen super mutants. Taking them out from range. Headshots, torso shots, shots in the eye. They're all melting. Strangely satisfying sound. Here in the melt. But as we take out the last few remaining super mutants in the room here, there's three in the adjacent room to us. We make our way over, end combat, so we can actually move a little bit more quickly. And the door is locked. We try a couple more times, but we cannot seemingly physically unlock this room. Don't know why, don't know if I've missed a code somewhere, but we cannot get in, and they have it lucky, those guys. They're going to be locked in there. Go around, in a loot goblin, taking whatever we can. Caps, don't really need caps, but we're taking them anyway. 
stim packs, ammo, anything we can get our hands on that is actually useful to us. Mostly plasma rifle ammo is what we need. We've come across now encumbrance issues, weight issues, which is an issue I have myself. <laughs> Getting over to this little part of the building here. Another super mutant stands in our way. We can't see anybody when they're actually behind the wall like that. You need the wall to kind of go see through when you walk closer to it to actually realise anybody's there or they to initiate combat with you. Check these lockers. Stim packs to everyone we can get our hands on. Don't know what lies ahead. Take the doctor's bag. First aid kit. Some rad away. Most impacts in this locker. And we get ready now. On the next floor. Down. Alarms triggered. Intruder alert. So they're now aware of our presence. We have to run through this red one. Take another 6 HP. But again, there's plenty of stimpacks lying around here. Plenty of ammo. If it would actually let us get it. Checking everything we possibly can. Now, I'm told here you sense there is a trap near. And I couldn't see anything, so I just ran. And I've stepped on a couple of traps there. 13 hit points, 11 hit points. Taking a few hits there. I don't actually know what they even were. Couldn't see any mines on the floor. Anything. But again, our aim is blocked. So we're going to need to shut down this force field. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's really frustrating. I've got the necessary skill level. But just sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Hit this one in the eyes, melt him. He's actually named Krupper. And we come across another super mutant here. Tanks a headshot. Again, he's named. He's called Flip. But we melt Flip. And now, when we go over to his body, if we can get out of combat, strangely, he's got a flower in his inventory, which is a strange thing for a super mutant to have. So we take the flower, take the stim packs, take any ammo that we might be able to get our hands on if it lets us carry it. And we head into the next room where we think that we've just rescued this person here, this woman, called Sarah. Oh my god, you killed him. He was my enemy, I had to kill him. I didn't know he was so close to you. He was my lover, he was my best friend. I can't believe you did that to him. So, but this guy's a super mutant, how are we even supposed to tell? We apologise, I shouldn't have apologised actually, really, I don't know why I did. He was a human being, the only way he could survive was by being dipped. You killed him. Sorry, you didn't have to kill him, leave me alone. So, she's a friend of the super mutants, we don't like them because they killed dog meat, so she can go. You can go and be with Flip, or whatever he was called now. We've lost all sense of morals and ethics now that dog meat is dead. <laughs> We're just indiscriminately killing. Can't use our repair skill once more to time to get through. And we get into the lift to take us to the next level. We drop down deeper, go to the fourth floor down. And we've got another group of super mutants here. Our aim's blocked because of where we stood. He's getting a little bit closer. And we start taking these guys out at range. They've obviously seen me. For some reason, I can't shoot these guys, I don't know why. One of them's blocked off. Take this one in the eyes. Tanks an eye shot somehow. But again, that action boy per come to good use. Now we can actually shoot twice per turn, which is invaluable. Melt another one. Another one goes as well. 
Now, we can actually go over and speak to this Mr. Handy. Once we're eventually out of combat. Check the loot, as always. Take any stim packs we can. Again, it won't let us take any ammo, so... We head over and use our repair skill on the Mr. Handy, who's currently broken. Robot's been repaired, but is not functioning. And if we use our science skill, we can bring it back into a functioning state, and finally it speaks to us. It's got an error, a task incomplete. We ask it what its incomplete task is. Cleaning model, must finish cleaning and maintenance. We tell it to go off and do its thing. Quickly check this guy's body for loot. And this Mr. Handy, in the spirit of dog meat, just goes and runs straight into a green force field. But luckily, deactivates that. Permanently deactivates it. And we'll head back over there shortly. Run through another force field. Don't actually even take any damage this time. A couple of robo brains standing our way. So as always, hit him in the CPU. He somehow tanks that one. Can't withstand a second shot. And now we've got some super mutants that are alerted to our presence. They're starting to come running around the corner. Take this second robo brain out. But at range, we can take out what's called the Lieutenant's Guards. And guys, I'm going to be honest, coming into this section here, I thought I was in for a hell of a fight. Probably even more difficult than the Mother Deathclaw. But as we go back into targeting mode with the plasma rifle. This is the lieutenant of the super mutant army. One shot to the head. Second shot to the head. And this is actually the fight over and he dies in an unbelievable fashion. And that is like something you see out of an alien movie. Kind of blows up from the inside out. So, disappointing, in a way. Just took two shots, didn't even take a hit, myself. And that was it. That's the Lieutenant of the Super Mutant Army, gone. And we've got here a member of the Children of the Cathedral. Doesn't want to speak to us, calls us a heathen. Talking about a vault that they want to plunder. So, better safe than sorry. Get him in the eyes from point blank range. And he turns into goo as well. Van Hagen, as he's called, not the band. And he is goo as well. So, quick loot check. As always, that apparently is locked. That's just a laser pistol, so we opt to leave it. Could have took his robes, see if I could have blended in anywhere. But prefer the power armour. Again, locker is locked. Just trying to see if that gives us any information on unlocking anything here. That hollow disc. Going at the pit boy. There's actually no new information. In the data here, we've still got the experiment tape, the transmissions, and the Sophia tape. So nothing new. And just the overseer briefing in the archives as well, which is one of the very first cutscenes. So we run back through to the section where the Mr. Handy ran through the uh, the security force field. We've hacked into this computer, get a load of codes here. So we pick the bottom option, hack the firewall to get more data, and we can see. This is the self-destruct terminal. And we opt for the three-minute silent self-destruct countdown. Let's not alert anybody in here. You can see in the background there, there's some big vats of FEV, which is where people are getting dipped into. But it's time now to run for our lives. We've got 200, 
81 seconds left, 275. We have to still disable these force fields one by one as we go. Stand on another landmine. <laughs> straight through a red one into the lift. Luckily, we can just take this one straight to the first floor. Let's get back through these force fields. Third time lucky. 227 seconds left. Time to get through the last force field. Takes us a number of attempts again. And we head for the exit. Bump into the Brotherhood who just left us. And it's time to run like hell and get out of here before this place blows. And with the FEV VATS destroyed, the Master can no longer create any more super mutants, create a super mutant army. We head back over to the base quickly to think about dog meat one more time before we move on to the final episode of the Fallout playthrough where you'll join us to take out the Master and destroy his cathedral and his followers. So guys, please join us in the final episode. See you then.